All right. Hello, everybody. Good evening. You are in the right place if you are here for the Thursday night group coaching call. If you are listening to the replay, amazing. I just want to say hi to everybody. And just if you are newer to me, you've seen me a few times, but if you haven't seen me before, I'm a Tarantia. I'm a physician, but we are here tonight for coaching. So we're going to put that hat on of looking at what's going on in our life and seeing kind of how is that story affecting us? How can we take ownership of things? What direction do we want things to go in? All of that kind of stuff. So I just want to remind you, when you come to a call like this, the group coaching calls, I don't want you to see it as like a time of entertainment, like, oh, I get to, you know, see someone sitting there and talking. I want you to really think about how does this problem show up in my life? So really like active listening. If you have a sheet of paper with every person that gets coached, I want you to think, where is this in my life and how can I apply it? What's the principle here that's being gone over? And then I want you to take out that gem because that's the way that you're really going to be able to make some traction in your life. The nice thing about group coaching is that we always see in others, it's very easy for us to see what's going on. But when we apply it to ourselves, that's where we can really get the, the massive magic there. All right. So just a reminder, this is recording so that if you guys want to watch the replay afterward, it's in the uh, private podcast library for you guys. So if you come up, we are recording it. And let's see, I don't have anything else on my list here. So let's get started with, I'm wondering if you guys can share what is a win that you have from the week? Let's just start out with that. And I wonder if today we could make it so that every single person that's on this call right now leaves a comment. I think that would be amazing. So let me know what is a win that you've had, something that has gone well for you. Maybe it's that you showed up tonight. Maybe it's that you ate one more fruit or vegetable, or you made an appointment that you thought you weren't going to be able to make. What is one thing that has gone well for you this week? Increased mindfulness. So amazing. I love that. Um, just started off. Ah, the comments always skip. So I'm going to make a good job. I'm going to try to really go back here today. Let's see. Okay. Just started on Monday and finished my first coaching session. So that is a win. Yes, Leanne, that's amazing. If I say names wrong, I apologize. <laughs> that is amazing. I'm so happy that you're here. Um, showed up for coaching first time. Amazing, Jane. That's what it's about. And even when things are not going good, that's when you keep showing up because the most amazing magic happens even when you feel things are not going good. Okay. Um, made a couple of self-care appointments. Amazing. Yep. Hit my walking goal. More exercise. Gosh, you guys are killing it. Got back on track. Yes. That's half the game, right? Like anytime you kind of veer a little bit off center, you just say, Hey, recalibrating. What do I want to do? Um, ask my husband to hide my scale so that I don't think about it anymore. I like that Karen. You know, I was listening to an interesting call before this. Cause you know, I like to go to things as well. And it was a, it was a coach that's really focused on um, fitness. And this is something that I've always had a big block about because I thought, well, I'm not you know, I'm not very fit. And she said, look, it doesn't matter what we're tracking, but we need some type of data. So is it that your clothes fit better? Is it that how long does it take you to walk a mile? You can track however you want. That feels good for you. You don't need the scale necessarily. So I love that. Okay. Let's see here. You guys are doing amazing. By the way, I'm pretty convinced that every single person is putting a win right now. I'm so amazed with you guys. Um, let me see the next one here. Um, I've built an exercise into my morning routine and I'm feeling good about this. That's amazing, Jennifer. Yeah. If I don't get my walk-in in the morning, it does not happen. So you found a time that works for you. Love that. Started tracking again. Yes. Right. Every day is not going to be perfect, but consistency, what you do more days than not is what's going to get you those results. Amazing. Also my first time I just joined. Hi Dawn. Welcome. You're going to see today, super nice, close environment. Again, I'm so glad that you're here. Okay. So let's see here. I've made space for myself and some better sleep and, and better and have, and have had some better sleeps makes a world of difference. Yes. Also, have you guys noticed, do any of you have this? Like if you have anxiety that you're kind of not addressing, if you're maybe not doing that self-care, then you might notice some of that fragmented sleep coming up. Um, completed my physical tests. Yes, you are doing the work. Uh, my first panel completed, let's see here, um, ate half the plate of vegetables and drank five cups of water. I joined today. You're killing it. You're, you're doing amazing. That's awesome. Weighed myself this morning and so happy with my accomplishments. Amazing. 
Let's see. Um, let's see, Erica. Mateo, during your first call, you mentioned the phrase, um, what is the most loving thing I can do for myself in the moment? This phrase has been so powerful for me. It's helped me to turn healthier self-care activities rather than turn to food. That is amazing. And and I want to bring up, you brought up that phrase. Thank you, Erica. I have a few more for you today. They're not that powerful, but if you can find some phrases that really work for you, it can be like the key to unlocking a lot of this. So I'm so glad that you found that and that that worked for you. So a little tip for you guys, if you see either in the comments or someone getting coached and you hear something and you think, oh, I really think that would be amazing. I want to try that. Make a little note, right? That's the reason why you should have a piece of pen and paper just so you can remember things because they'll be out of your head in two seconds. All right. So if you more here. So Carol, first time here. Welcome. Welcome. Listening to my body cue says Kelly. Amazing. That is 99% of the work is just figuring out what's going on for us. Um, just had the chasing cupcakes book delivered today. Looking forward to it. Yes. For those of you guys that are newer, I love the book chasing cupcakes. It is really like a mindset book. There's lots of prompts at the end if you're into journaling, but it is a really quick read because she's such a good writer, Elizabeth Benton, that if you guys want to dig into one book, that's like, that's the one that I recommend to start with. So amazing. You guys are doing awesome. So before I get into talking about anything, did any of you guys have any questions? Any questions that you want to make sure we go over today? Anything that's really been bothering you just before I go over a thing or two? Okay. I'm going to give you a minute to think about that. And then I want you also to percolate on self-control with sweets. Okay. So, let, so we'll definitely make sure we talk about that. Okay. And then also I want you to think about if you plan on getting coached today, because I know we're going to coach a few people. I want you to think about raising your hand when I ask you to in a few minutes here. Okay. This is an open forum coaching, meaning you don't need to have signed up, nothing like that. You just raise your hand. If you're newer to zoom on the bottom of the controls, there's a little place where you can put your hand up and that lets me know, Hey, I want to talk to coach Matea. And then I bring you up so that we're talking next to each other. And I just get to see what's going on with you. There's no problem too big, too small. We just kind of work through it and we just kind of see where you're at. Okay. So the first thing I just wanted to talk about real quick, I was thinking about what are we going to talk about today? And I was reminded of this really awesome podcast episode that I was listening to last year. And she talked about three game-changing phrases. And I love that Erica just mentioned, you know, how she heard that one way of kind of what's the most loving thing I can do for myself. And that really works for her to be able to then act in a way that's really supportive. Right. And so one of the hard challenges that I see people go through is, if you have an overeat or when times are challenging, it's hard to kind of pivot out of that. And why would we want to pivot or like a little bit change our mindset? Because when we stay kind of in that negative thought pattern, we end up doing things that don't support us. And then we keep overeating and doing more and more things. And so how can we pivot a little bit to keep going, right? You guys talked about getting back on track. How can we do that? So one of the ways is to learn how to kind of, uh, pivot. So what this is, is, and if you want to check out the episode, it's style masterclass with Judith Gatton. She teaches style and confidence for um, curvy ladies. So I, I think her work's amazing. She talks about three phrases and I'm going to show, I'm going to put this up here. And then I also wrote it out so I can put it into the comments real quick. Cause I don't, I know you guys are going to be, let me just put it here real quick. Okay. So when you notice that things have gone wrong and you want to sit there and beat yourself up. Let me give you a prime example. And maybe you guys can give me some other ones. So you put, let's say you put on an outfit and it's in the morning and you look in the mirror and you suddenly think, I can't believe I'm so overweight. I can't like, you just have all these negative thoughts about yourself, or maybe you had a great dinner, but then at night you had a snack you didn't plan for. And you sit there saying, I always do this. I can't believe it. Are there any times like that, that you guys can relate to when you just kind of beat up on yourself? What do you guys tell yourself when that's going on? Like what's a line that you kind of realize you always come back to like, I'm never gonna be able to get this done. It's always going to be hard. It's hard to take care of myself. Is there anything like that where you always kind of tell yourself that line? I wish I had more self-control. Yes, I can't do this, right? Gosh, you guys are coming up with such great ones. I'll never be able to change this. Yes, definitely. I tell myself I'm a failure. I'll never learn. Notice it's all the same, right? It's all, I'm not good enough. I cheated. Might as well keep going. Yes. Okay, so imagine if we were thinking, Let's go to the, to the top here. You know, I cheated. I might as well keep going. You probably feel super defeated. You feel super um, 
low, right? We could come up with a million words, but you feel horrible. And then you don't end up doing things. You, you end up sitting there thinking a bunch of negative things. You don't end up doing anything to help yourself out. And then you end up being in a much worse spot, right? So what you could try in that scenario, what you guys wrote down. So write that down. So you know where you start and you could start out with the phrase, of course. Okay. So it's of course. And then the next one is up until now. And the third one is this is the part where and I put it in the chat, but I'm also going to talk you through each section. So you start out with saying, of course, I think this. And you say that because, of course, because you practiced it so many times. Of course, I think that it's never going to be easy because I've thought this for so long. So you just start out with acknowledging it. That's the of course part. You can't see it in the chat. Okay, I'm going to re-put it here because I think it got lost with all the Let's see, can you see it now? So I have, of course, is number one. Number two is up until now. And number three is this is the part where, you know, um, no, you're saying no. Okay, so let me see here. Oh, that's why, because it's not everyone. Thank you. You guys are amazing. <laughs> I'm like round three. No, it's time one. <laughs> so number one is, of course. Number two is up until now. And number three is this is the part where. Okay, so you say you first acknowledge the of course part is, of course, I think this way. I've been thinking this for 100 years. And then you say part two, but up until now, I always did it this way. And then you do number three, but this is the part where, and you get to insert where you actually want to go. That's the pivot. Okay, so kind of how this would work out practically because I use this all the time. And the reason I brought this up, she did this episode May of last year in 2021. I use like this phrasing of things, you will probably hear me use this constantly because I heard it. They were amazing in the combination that she came up with. And I started to use it constantly. So you say, of course, I think that whatever it is, of course, I think that I can never do this because for the past 10 years, I've told myself that every single time I overeat a little amount, I tell myself I can't do it. But up until now, I never knew any new tools. I didn't know any different way to do it. And so this is the part where I get to start to rewrite the story. I get to start to decide that just because I've had one cookie doesn't mean that I need to have the next 10. It doesn't mean that I can never be someone, right? It's a game changer. Yes, Val. It, it doesn't mean that I can't be someone that has a different story now. So I wonder if this sounds like something that any of you think you could implement, that you could go. Yeah, Erica's saying, love this. This is just a really simple way of just acknowledging where you're at. Of course, you neutralize the shitty feeling. You're like, of course, of course, I feel down in the dumps right now. I've had a really hard day, right? But up until now, I never knew at the end of a hard day how to relax in a way that didn't involve food. But this is the part where I'm going to figure out 20 ways to relax that don't involve food. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I feel a whole lot better after I say that. I'm like, yeah, I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit more empowered, right? This is the part where you get to take your power back because you're not, you're not leaving it status quo. You're not leaving it exactly how it is. You are going to decide how this goes. And this is part of the pivot. So you acknowledge where it's at with the, of course, you say up until now, this is what's been going on, but this is the part where I'm going to decide differently. What do you guys think about that? Does this sound like something that is something that you could go out and do? Shining a spotlight on shame rather than swimming in it. Yes. Naomi, you're, I love that. That's very, that reminds me what you said there reminds me almost of Brene Brown. That's beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah. Because it's, it's allowing you to, to stop staying in the same place. It's just allowing you to say, yeah, I know where I'm at. It's not who I am. It's something that I've done and I'm moving on. No more thoughts about this. We're, this is now the next version of who we are. And then we act from that place. Okay. So that's what I wanted to start out with because I feel like when we come into this world, especially if you guys are newer here, you're like, what is this coaching thing? Coaching is about hearing the stories of what we tell ourselves. I'm never gonna be able to do it. It's too hard. And deciding, do I like that? Like, do I like how it makes me feel when I think that? And if you want to hold on to it, no problem, right? Otherwise you get to change it. And this is a little way that you can do that. Yeah. Um, so Jennifer said, I like that it helps uh, start the pause. Let's see. Um, I like that it helps start the pause from doing something I don't want to do. Yes. You guys remember, I think we talked about the compassion pause where 
you, whenever you feel an urge, a craving, or you've overeaten any scenario where you just feel like you're um, wanting to do something that you necessarily don't want to do, right? Like you're wanting to go eat the cookies and you didn't plan to. A compassion pause can be that, that five minutes or just a few seconds where you just say, what do I really need? You just take a second because you're actually seeing your feeling at that second. And then you still have permission to go eat and do whatever you want to do, but you're starting to get, we call it emotional strength training. When you just start to get a second between, I think I want to do this. I actually check in with what I need before I go do whatever I'm going to do. Does that make sense? Like you just start to make a little bit of a pause between what I want to do, the urge, the urgency, and I just take a minute to think about it. I can't seem to take that pause before putting something in my mouth. I think about it about five minutes too late. Okay, Judy, I'm glad you brought that up because something that I've been kind of working with clients this week on is a little bit about sort of the phases of overeating, healing your relationship with overeating. And I think everybody thinks that you're going to like join a program and then immediately it's going to be healed. And the problem is first, you're sort of in this, you notice it afterward. It's the subconscious eating. The habits are so quick, you're not catching them at all. So you've already gotten the fast food. You've already eaten everything. It's afterward. That's phase one. Okay. Phase two is conscious overeating. Phase two is I know I don't want to be overeating. I am thinking I don't want to be overeating, but I'm doing it and it feels horrible, but that's progress. Okay. That's during phase three is I notice it before but I still overeat. Do you notice that phase three is before I do it, I still notice that I don't want to eat, but I still do it. Okay. Phase four is I get this mastery level where I know I don't want to do it and I'm able to pause and I'm able to redirect. That's phase four. So I want you to notice majority of you, when you came in the program, you were probably in stage one. You probably like, you didn't even know what was happening. Right. Right. And then maybe you moved into with some help with, with meeting with some of the nutritionists, with meeting with some of the doctors, you, you moved into stage two where you were aware of what was happening, but it's still happening. And so you're moving toward the version that can pause and then act from that place. But we don't start out there minute one that takes a little bit of practice, right? I pause and then feel quote unquote deprived and then overdo it. Yeah. So Sue, you are not asking yourself then during that pause, what do I really need? Because you wouldn't feel deprived if, if you want to go eat that thing, you can go eat it, right? There's like no problem with that. But the, the place of deprivation is coming from, um, uh, there's an unmet need there. Does that make sense? Sue, I wonder if you'd be open to like coming up for coaching, because I think some of this could be, we could kind of go through it a little bit. Let me see here. So does that make sense to you guys that there's these different stages? And so you have to be patient with yourself where you're at because you, you are making traction, you are moving forward, but it's not overnight. And you know what the good news is that because it's not overnight, it actually sticks around. That's like the beauty of being in a program like this is that you're actually doing the work. And so it sticks around instead of coming right back on. Right. Okay. So let's see here. Um, Erica, you had your hand up. Is that okay? If I bring you up, I'm assuming I'm still seeing your hand up. So I'm going to go ahead and bring you on for coaching. If that's okay. Let's see. I'm going to promote you to panelists. You're coming on. Hello, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? Perfect. How are you doing? Good. Um, I've loved your coaching so far. Oh, thank you. (laughs) Um, I guess what I wanted to be coached on tonight, it doesn't have anything to do with what you were just talking about. Oh yeah, no. Um, It's more related to like relationships and the concept of the manual. Um, So I think like one of the things I struggle with, um, with my husband, so uh, we have a great relationship. Um, Like he's my person. Um, But uh, like, sometimes I struggle with um, feeling like, um, when we have free time, I'm like always kind of getting things done where he will just take time to relax. Um, 
And then I feel like, okay, because he's not doing all of this work when we have time to do it, um, I make it mean that he's like leaving it for me to do. And Mm. I've kind of like realized that. Um, And interestingly with this whole concept, I really struggle with um, taking time to do something that's just fun and just relaxing. Um, But I find, um, say like after our kids are in bed, I want to knock like five things off a to-do list and he'll kind of sit and watch TV. And then I get irritated. Yeah. Why? Why? So why, why is it hard to take like a fun or relaxing time? I don't think I have a lot of practice with doing yeah. it. And it's something um, I've made a priority for, um, for this year. Okay. And uh, so now I do like, I'll, um, like schedule something fun into my week. That's not like something to scratch off my to-do list. Are you doing it? Yep. Okay. Okay. Like when, okay. Right. Like you realize this you're, and you're planning it and doing it. Yes. So where do you think the pro like, where do you think the problem still remains? Cause it sounds like you've already, you know, it exists. You're doing it. It's like being irritated at my partner because it's like he's not making good use of his time. Okay. So what what should or he do? there's things on our household to do list. So it's not kind of left to me. Okay. But then at the same time, you told me like, you want to have this fun, relaxing time. I want to carve that into my week. Um, I, I think like the whole issue is being irritated because I have this thought that like if, if he's kind of relaxing and not helping to get like things done, then it like all falls on me to do. Is that true? Um, no. So I know there's things that like he takes care of that. that and that's I, like, the reason I, I ask that I I've thought about that. Like, for instance, he does all of our like bills, paperwork, does it all. Um, so I, like, I realize there's things that he does and he gets it done on his own time, but I guess I, I don't know if it's just this feeling of like, if I'm busy doing things around the house, like, so should you. Yeah. So where do you want to go with it? I don't want to feel irritated. Yeah. Like, let me ask you if, if we were to have like your most amazing results, like I could like just get, we could buy it off the shelf at target. Right. And I could hand it to you. What, what would that be? Like, is it, Hey, he helps me at night and then we together chill for an hour. Like, what is it that you're actually wanting? Cause you have some type of picture. So this is interesting. I feel like Um, uh, I feel like I want more of an equal division of labor, but I also realize that that's very difficult to quantify. And I feel like my brain goes towards the thought of I do everything. He doesn't do much, but, but I know actually that's not true. Like I've kind of made a list of everything that he does, everything that I do, but I, I just have this thought that like, I take on a greater burden of the like household tasks, but then I'm like, that's this thought in my head, but so you know, I think it's just this like 
thought that I have in my head that probably isn't true and it's causing this irritation. (laughs) So why do you think you hold on to it? I don't know. Yeah. So it, it's because here's the interesting thing. So this equal division of labor. So by the way, for those of you guys that are listening, if you're like, what is the manual? Because we're like, we're like talking sign language and no one knows what we're talking about. So the manual, if you guys are listening, it's like a rule book that we have for other people and they don't even know it's been written. So it's like, listen, for him to be a good husband, he needs to help me out equally. He can't sit on the couch unless we're both sitting together. It's this rule thing. And we need that to happen so that we can feel good. So So what, give me an example of the last time when you felt this, you were like, I'm really annoyed and this happened. Well, actually this didn't, well, say, well, this isn't, doesn't have to do with like tasks of getting things done, but say tonight, um, a difference in how we would approach parenting, like a parenting thing that came up with our kids. Okay. So what, what happened or what, how did you feel? Um, like my daughter was doing something, um, that we would rather not have her do. And he was kind of more, took a more stern approach where I would kind of look at it through like compassion and teaching her. Mm, okay. So that was him not showing up fully because of how he did it. It's just, just, I I think I struggle with, I want things done my way. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. This is good. Cause I think like we're starting to get to the heart of it. Okay. So there's like a right way to do it. Yes. Like it's hard for me to accept maybe different ways of doing things. Yeah. So that's just good to know. I have a very, I have a a fixed way that I want it to do. And most of us are like this, right? Like we want the world to work in the way that we want it to work. Yeah. But what if the way he's doing it is actually totally perfect? But it's not. (laughs) Um, in my brain, it's not, I, I, that's an interesting thought. I've never, I've never thought of that. I mean, what do you think life would look like if you guys both acted exactly the same? What do you think would happen? I'd be less irritated. (laughs) No, you wouldn't Um, have the, you wouldn't it's interesting because your kids wouldn't be getting these different perspectives, right? There's different energy happening there. There's different things happening. You almost can't be that mother role without what's happening here. Right. It's, it, do you yeah. think it could be kind of allowing you to show up in the way that you want to show up because you're seeing what he's doing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel like I have to like sit with that for a minute. Um, I guess it would give us both like a different perspective on things. Mm -hmm. Um, however, I don't know. I feel like I'm just stuck in this thought, like my way's better, (laughs) my way's better. How do you, okay. So we know that this is where you're at right now. So if we, if we were to write out my way is better, this is what we call, you know, the unintentional thought, right? It's like where we're at right now, where do you, how do you want to be thinking about your husband and how this stuff happens? I think like, I just want to be like at peace with it. And like, for instance, this whole, like switching back to like, you know, I think I live my life, um, 
with this thought that I have to make like every minute of my life efficient. And yeah. so, you know, watching him sit and relax and doing something like, I actually think it's good for me to see that, but then I just think it's like the pendulum swung like the other way. Am I remembering this right? That you're a physician. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So this is why I bring this up, but this doesn't just apply to physicians. This applies to everyone. There's this thing where it's like, especially women, like we need to constantly be doing something to like earn the worthiness. Like we're doing really good. Right. So it's almost hard sometimes to just like sit with kids or just sit in the evening and not do anything because we're used to, I mean, drop like a yes in the comments. If you guys can relate, it's like, go, 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 go. Right. Like during the day, we're doing things all day. And then at night we manage the house, right. The second shift that women can do. So it's like, yes. Right. But here, but, but we end up then a lot of the time feeling horrendous because we've never had a moment of mindfulness and just relaxing and chilling. Right. So it's interesting because you're almost like seeing a little bit of what you want, but you're not having it. And so then you're almost like getting mad at him. Is any of that ringing true? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So can I point out something that's really interesting and like, just correct me if I'm wrong. So you're unintentionally where you're at is my way is better. Right. And where yeah. you really want to get to is I'm at peace with it. But what you thought initially that you wanted to get to is like, we're all the same. That's not where you want to get. You want to get to where you're at peace with how it's happening. That is so much more within your grasp than you realize. Okay. You're not, you're not trying to get to a place where you change him, where he does other things, right? You're wanting to be at peace with how things are happening. Like, and this is the, the, like the turmoil that you're at is that you've done all this thought work and you're like, look, I can see that he does stuff. I love him. He's my equal. Like you said, all these amazing things, right? But you're just like, the turmoil is, I think I have this better way and I want to be more at peace with it. It's not far away. Okay. So what would it look like if you were at peace with how things are? Um, more acceptance, I guess, with a different approach. Okay. But that's difficult. <laughs> well, well, like, I don't think I can get there. Okay. We don't have to believe everything at first, right? Yeah. Are you willing to believe that there's a version where there's more acceptance? Like I'm willing to believe one day it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have to be like, I have total acceptance right now that can feel fake. Right. But you can say, I'm willing to believe that there's a version where I'm more accepting of how things are going. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So if we were to just think, you know, you're coming from this version of I'm at peace with things. I'm feeling more accepting. What do you think that version of you does? What kind of actions does she take? Um, I think, um, taking a pause, like rather than being like reactionary um okay. just like taking a pause and like considering the difference of opinion or the different like another way to do things yes so this version of you would pause a little bit not be as reactionary and just consider the other side mm-hmm does that feel out of reach that there could be a version of you that maybe even tomorrow night when this scenario goes down, pauses for a second and just considers the sides? Um, yes. I think, yeah. It's still like, uh, yeah, I, I definitely can do that. I think, I think because like, I think about things and put so much thought into them. I'm just like, no, like this is the way it should be done. So I think I still struggle with that part of it. Like, mm -hmm. I think I could give it pause and I could be like, yeah, there's like more than one way to approach this, 
but I still think I struggle with my way is better. Yeah. Notice when you do that, my way is better. This is, you know, all that. And this is like your, your, your thought actually, it's getting you stuck. The, my way is better. You create a lot of resistance for yourself. So it's like, you're going yeah. through this thick, thick mud. And it's like, it's a really hard road that you're going down. Lots of resistance. Yes. And there's an, there's an easier road with considering other options. Yes. That makes it. I feel like, yes, that is helpful. I think when you, like, when you frame it that way, um, it does, it, it makes it feel like, um, it would evoke less of a, like irritation within me. Yeah. 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 You know, I would just start with point with playing around with a little bit. So you write out my way is best. And then I would always ask yourself, you guys have heard me say this a million times. Is it true? Is it loving? Is it kind? So is it true that my way is always the best? I don't know. Like, let's like wiggle that loose, right? Yeah. Is it loving to put that on my family to always think that my way is the best? Okay. Maybe not, right? Like maybe it works really well at work, but maybe at home it's like, oh, this just, this, that's not working anymore when I'm home. Right. Cause then I'm angry all day long. <laughs> yeah. And it's yeah. like, is it kind to think that I'm always, always that, that my way is always better. Yeah. What does that do for you to kind of just think, is it true? Is it loving? Is it kind? Um, it makes me think of the situation through more of a compassionate lens. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you're ultimately being super hard on yourself right? See, I see it as being super hard on my partner, which I don't want to do. He's sitting there and has no idea all this that's happening in your mind. This is literally all your model. It's like all happening in your head. He's sitting there probably enjoying having a good time. And we don't ever need to worry about other people because in your mind, it's, it's a storm what's happening, right? Like this, I know a better way. I wish he was up here. Right. He's probably having an amazing time watching TV or whatever he's doing. <laughs> like, look, look at it objectively, like collect some data next time when this is happening. Like he was probably stern and then just like went and did his thing. And you were probably like really in it. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you're being hard on yourself. It's always ends up. The result is always what's happening with us. Okay. Yes. I like that. <laughs> Yeah. I know we went in a lot of places. I actually think this is yes. really good. And I don't even know that we've gotten to the bottom of it. Do you feel like we've started to break in? Yes. Okay. Cause I feel like you're, you've done so much good work up to this point. And this is the relationship stuff. Remember it's always our thoughts about other people, right? It has like nothing to do with what they're even doing. It's yeah. literally how we think about them. That's defining all of it. So it's not out of reach at all. What you want. In fact, it's like so close it's just really scaling it back and being like, I'm just going to start where I'm at, which is like, do I always know the best way or that my way is better? Okay. Does that sound like, sound like an okay starting place? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'll try awesome. that. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you came on. I, I feel like I'm going to, I'm going to put you back here to, um, let's see, to attendee. I feel like everyone can relate to this. Like you want your significant other to be doing certain things so that you can feel better. And I'm not saying that you don't have boundaries and that you don't have expectations and all of that. Okay. But often it's very, it's very small things, but they really, um, I'm going to give you an example because I did my own manual work with again, my loving husband. <laughs> so the trash, he just doesn't see that it's overflowing. He's doing a million other things. He just does not notice that. And I had to work on like, my initial thought was like, excuse my language, like how the hell does he not see that this trash is overflowing? And then I realized that's just like not on his radar. He doesn't notice it like I do. That's my gift that I notice this trash. He does a million other things. And I had to like, just like Erica did, like I had to like make that list and be like, oh my gosh. And when he's not here a week, boy, do I notice it. But 
the work was like, why am I distressing myself so much when this trash doesn't get taken out? It's like, I end up being the one that gets hurt. He, he doesn't even know what's happening. Yeah. Thank you for sharing it, Erica. Yeah. Your insights inspiring. Totally. Yeah. So that was, um, so again, the manual is if you have a relationship or a scenario, whatever it is, and you notice that I want them to do this certain thing. And you're like, but they should, whenever you notice the word should in there, right? Like they should be doing X, Y, Z. I want you to write that out. What is it that you're expecting a good friend to be a good spouse, a good uh, student? If you're a teacher, like whatever it is, you have this like manual. So when they don't do that, then you feel a certain way. They don't even know what's there. So what we always have to look at is like, why am I wanting them to do this so that I can feel better? Let me know if that's confusing because sometimes the relationship manual work is a little bit uh, dicey because it's like, there's lots of um, like intellectual ways of thinking about it. Okay. All right, Sue, are you game for coming up? I'm going to bring you up. All right. I'm excited to talk about this pause. This takes a second to think, hello. Right. You are still muted, still no, okay. I see okay. your video. I'm, I'm getting there. Your hair. <laughs> Hello. Oh my gosh, your hair is blowing. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. Hi. Well, I just thought I'd show up since you yes. kind of pointed out. I had a few, you know, I don't know. I know all this stuff intellectually. Oh, Erica, by the way, not alone. Um, yes. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, and as the kids get older, it does get a little bit easier. I can say that. Um, yeah, so like, I'm, I feel like I'm really making my choices that I want to make. And, and then there's that, that moment of, it's just, there's something there and, and it's, and I'm pausing and you know, uh, we did a mindfulness exercise yesterday in the DBT group and I took a bite of something. I was share a cookie, but I shared something with my son and I'm like, I'm going to have this moment with him. I'm going to break bread with him. I'm going to, I'm going to just going to have the one cookie. That's not even sweets, really not what I go for. And then I had like six of them, but mm -hmm. I started off really well. Cause I was like, well, no, I'm not going to do that. And then, and then I transferred that energy to, yes, I'm going to, because this is a moment with my 18 year old and how many more of these are we going to have? And then I had the one and it's like, I started out with, with the mindfulness eating and I was feeling it and tasting it. I smelled it first. I did all the right things. And then all of a sudden it was, I was six cookies in. I'm like, damn, okay. I just did it again. Can we, can we first celebrate that you started out with doing the mindfulness part? Because yes. you're telling me, I yeah. smelled it. I taste it. I know what you're talking about, that exercise, right? Like yeah. you got in tune with it. You were planning on one. Can we, did you celebrate I, that? Because had you I ever did. done that I absolutely did. I absolutely celebrated it. Okay. By having another one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's separate. Okay. I'm killing myself. So yeah. You had this, and I didn't catch the exact, like write down all of it, but you had this thought that the moment I'm this moment with him. And I'm wondering, was there something there? Like what, what story ran through your mind? Because you associated the food with him. Yeah, no, it was just, he came in after school and we were sitting down having a conversation and, you know, sometimes the kids will come home from school. It's high school. I have two boys, they go to their hibernate mm -hmm. and sometimes I don't see them for a couple hours. <laughs> and then, so he was here, he was hanging out, he was wanting to talk. And I thought, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to keep going with this. Mm -hmm. And and it turned into some self-sabotage and it wasn't uh, emotional eating. I did, I mean, maybe the emotional part was the good part. It, it wasn't a, a negative emotional eating. Like when, when Erica was talking, I think I probably would have turned to food after that kind of disagreement with my husband. Later, I would have just been like, oh, I'm, I'm gonna, yeah. you know, I was, I was mean to him or I didn't, he, he didn't, whatever. And I would have turned to food. So this was a good emotional experience. Yeah. What if, let me ask you in the past, like when you've had cookies, have you always had a few? Like, is this new? Yeah, one? yeah, it's a thing. Okay. It's a thing. I'll overdo it with, with whatever it is. And I used the word deprived before, and I didn't mean deprived. I just, it's almost like I can't just have one. Okay. I can't just have one. Okay. So this is one of your little shitty thoughts. I can't just yeah. have one. Okay. 
I want to suggest something first, just with, you know, how it kind of turned into more. Sometimes we're really used to habits. I call them habit loops. Like they're just running, like they run on autopilot and it's because our brain stores stuff away. It's actually trying to keep us safe. So it's like, you just learn whenever there's cookies around, we have a few. It's kind of like, it's just always happened. I so believe my, that fully. Yeah. Yes. So it's like, okay, I'm not doing anything horrible. This, I'm not a bad person. It's just literally my brain has learned. We just, they're we don't think to just have one and and immediately push it away. You know, there are some people like they wouldn't even think to have more, right? Okay, so that's just happening. So now we have to deprogram that. So you did the work of, you know, mindfully being there, but now like step two is then what do I have to do so that I either put the, like move them away a little bit or that's a new version of you that doesn't have more. That's gonna, might be a little, I don't wanna use the word work. I hate that word, but it's like, work. but here's the thing, it's just different. It's challenging. It's challenging my previous behavioral pattern. Right. Because let me ask you this, like, did the cookies make it better? Or was it just the fact that you were with your son? Well, it was interesting because when I smelled the cookie and I did all that, I thought, gosh, what does that remind me of? Yeah. And I was doing that. And I thought, okay, I'm going to take a bite and see. And we were talking about the taste of it and it was a coconut cookie or something. And, um, I was like, oh, so then my husband came in and I was like, have one of these cookies. Does it remind you of something we used to have, you know, in our childhood? And, and like, there was all this thought that went into it. Right. And then, so maybe there was a, a, a association, with, but I know there really wasn't. That's just my pattern that yeah. I am going to cancel with like, the new hey, version. The, the, it's like, of course we had more, we were used to it. This is the part where I decide that in the future, I'm going to do one and I'm going to figure out how I can pause or kind of start to rewrite how things go. Yeah. Cause I find I'll do that. Like I made this delicious beef and barley soup for lunch today and was satiated after one bowl, but gosh, it was good. Mm-hmm. So I went back for another half bowl and I really didn't need to. Yeah. It's just that over overdoing it pattern that I would like to. Yeah. What it's just a pattern, right? Like where if you, if you're just used to always, like for me, it was always at night snacking was like a big thing. And I mean, like, like another dinner, you know, and it was like, I had to learn. I was so irritated when I got rid of that. And, and I was, I was so angry, honestly, to not be in bed having chips. It's amazing that you could feel that strongly, but it was like, I just had to learn a version. Like now the thought of eating after dinner, I, it doesn't even occur to me, but that's like years out. You know, it's like, I I had to outgrow that. It was months of me being angry that I couldn't have chips in bed. I'm already a red. (laughs) I can't can't take more anger. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I understand what you're saying. I do. Yeah. Would cutting the Oh, go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, would cutting the cookies in six pieces work and eat and eat each piece savoring it. I bet it would. At least it's worth a shot, right? Because yeah, it's like a little brain hack, right? It's like, hey, let me yeah. just see if there's more abundance, right? Um, I remember there was a girl in school and she so was in grade school. Every day she brought a piece of chocolate. And I remember I was like, if I would be eating, I would just, you know, eat it. But she would really little eat these pieces. And I now I'm realizing she was really mindful. (laughs) Like she really enjoyed it. Not from a place of eating disorder, just from a really like healthy, she was going to totally love it and enjoy it, you know? Yeah. Mm. So yeah. How how long have you been on this journey? Uh, I started in November. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know how long that is. Three months. So, so literally only a few months. Yeah. So habit change, this is something that I heard the other day, again, that chasing cupcakes, lady, Elizabeth Benton, she said, learning can be rushed. Change cannot, so we can learn, (gasps) right. You can like learn, 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 learn. You can come in this program. You're like slamming videos and you're like, I'm amazing. And the change takes time. Yeah. Cause I feel like intellectually I'm there. Yep. Yeah. God, but usually knowledge is not the problem. Like everyone on this call, I'm in a venture to say you are very smart. You know exactly what you're doing. It's being able to slow down long enough to create some new habits consistently, not beat ourselves up when we get a second portion, when, you know, for maybe a week or two, we've been doing great. 
Mm-hmm. Because new habits, like we so easily go back to the same neural pathway, meaning that old programming, like our brain is amazing. It's mm-hmm. amazing. So you nothing has gone the wrong. neural pathways. Is that addressed in the book Atomic Habits as well? Um, I don't think he talks about it that it might be a little bit. It's funny. I have it right in front of me. I'll, I'll get back to you next Thursday. Yeah. <laughs> I've read it, but I can't remember. The, yeah. the whole point with neural pathways is that that's how we learn, right? When we do something, if it's a super high dopamine experience, like let's say you eat a, a cookie, you will create a neural pathway like no other right away. And other things take a little bit longer to form, but we know that we have what's called neuroplasticity, meaning we can kind of change the course of our brain. That's like the amazing thing about this work. Now, do we sometimes go back? Is it sometimes harder for some of us because our, the way our brain chemistry is, we could get all into it, but the reality is we have the ability to change and it's amazing. It just takes time sometimes. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Illuminating. Okay, I'm, so, I'm so glad you came on. Thank you. I'm going to, I'm going to see, I'm going to put you back to change you back to attendee. That was amazing. This is what I want you guys to hear. Let's see here. Is it the same for mental health issues and having food as a comfort? Um, what do you mean by mental health issues? Like, are you talking about if you have depression and you're turning to food? Cause I don't want to medicalize this. Like, I don't want to make this that, oh, it's like different if we have, you know, whatever things going on. Um, so I'm not sure the specifics of what you're asking here in the comments, but, but yes. And others, he, here's the thing. I just think that I don't care what thing is going on. I sometimes think the labeling of it is unhelpful um, in the context with food. And the reason I say this is because I think that s- small enough changes can be accomplished with anyone. So I think sometimes, let me just say what I, this is anecdotal. Okay. And this is not medical advice. Sometimes what I see is if someone is in a depression, It's very hard sometimes to go and make radical life changes. Of course, maybe part of your depression is that you have a hard time getting out of bed. So the most loving thing that we can do is create really simple, basic protocols for you. Like if you have depression, part of it could be, I drink water today. If it's a hard day for me, I make sure to drink water. And my 1% upgrade is that I try to eat one vegetable. So that's kind of the way I would view it is that we just always want to make the change as simple and basic as possible. That's why I love this book, Atomic Habits. It talks about the 1% upgrade, which is really what's the smallest next little thing that I'm willing to do that is flexible and that is easy. So we don't do radical things because they don't stick around. So when you find like you want to start like exercising an hour a day and you want to do all this stuff, it just doesn't stick around. So whenever things don't stick around, we always say, what am I willing to do? What's easy? What can I flexibly fit in my life? And then we, we take action from that place. So I hope that answered your question with that. Let me know if it didn't. Okay. Did we answer, there was a question higher up here when I asked in the beginning and I, I can't even find it anymore when I said, Hey, let's, you know, any questions that you guys had, do you want to re-ask the question if I didn't make sure to get to it today? Look further up here. It's really hard to find stuff. Okay, I'm going to let you re-ask it down below. Do any of you guys have any questions? Any other things that are going on for you? Does anyone else want coaching, by the way? Because we definitely have time to, to, to do more coaching. So I want you to put your hand up here. Sweets and self-control. Yes. Okay, so I want to suggest something. So food is neither good nor bad. We can call that food neutrality. This is kind of the way I view food. There's nothing good or bad about it. So sweets, pasta, pizza, I don't care what it is that historically the diet culture has kind of told you is a bad food. It's not good or bad. There's different versions of food where you feel better or not based on eating it. So for example, I want to suggest if there's good, better, best. So good foods might be things like chocolate where you like the taste, but they really don't support your weight loss. And you actually feel really tired and shaky and horrible afterward. That might be good food. Better food might be a little bit the plus up. So instead of getting fast food, you uh, fry it at home with better oil. And then the best version of it might be, I bake veggies in the oven and, you know, whatever else ideal stuff, but I feel really great when I eat it. I achieve my goals. I feel amazing. The only difference, like when you think about sweets, it's that you might not be able to tell as easily when I'm hungry and when I'm not. So that's where the self-control part comes in. It activates so much of your brain to say, this tastes amazing. We want more. Like it's literally like 
primally it's in there where it's like we have these sweets and we want more because the way the way I view this like everyone has a different way of seeing this but we were literally programmed that when something tastes sweet and is great like tons of fat tons of sugar things like chocolate our brain is literally like eat more because we don't know when we're going to get more of it and we don't live in that world anymore right like we've got food everywhere but our brain still is like in the caveman days and so when you say you know sweets and self-control it's that a lot of the times it's just harder for us to have that stopping point we don't usually have that if it's a vegetable or really like unprocessed food. Like I was eating something tonight and the dinner was just, oh, it's just less than great. And I really was able to stop well in advance. It was just, I didn't want to keep going. So here's what I want to challenge you with sweets. I want you to decide, do you want that in your life? Okay. There's no problem if you want it in your life. I am someone that wants it in my life. And this is why I live at a little bit of a higher weight because I want to have chocolate and sweets and all the things. What I do decide on is when I'm going to have it, how I'm going to have it. And then I have it enough that it's not this amazing thing anymore. So I have deprogrammed the, um, the scarcity of, I can never have it. No, I can literally plan it whenever I want. If I want it five times a week, I'll have it. So I don't do this anymore where we like, don't do sweets because it created this scenario where I would go insane on it, right? It's the whole like restrictive thing. Whenever you restrict something, you want more and more. So you can have whatever you want. If you want to plan it in, go plan it in. There's nothing good or bad about it. You get to develop the relationship that you want. Sometimes I don't think it's worth it, the amount of management that I have to do with some of these foods. And so I choose not to have them because I don't want to have to sit there and have these massive urges and cravings for days and days. Did that answer kind of the sweets and self-control that there's the only reason usually why it feels like it's so out of control is because our brain is getting, yes, thank you. Our brain is getting lit up like no other. Okay. So actually it's working normally. Like that's not even villainize the sweets anymore. Cause it's like, you want to feel that when you have chocolate, the problem is usually we've not normalized it. So we don't normalize, okay, my brain feels this way and that's okay. I can learn to stop. I can learn that I'm in control with these things because I have them enough. And ultimately food is just food. It's like, there's a, a reaction happening here. Absolutely choosing means I decide not the urge. Yeah. Let me say a quick word about urges. Okay. Urges feel urgent, no pun intended. <laughs> so when you have an urge, you are not physically hungry. Okay. So I just want to clarify here. Urges are not my stomach's grumbling. Urges are usually like your mouth is dry. Your throat's tightening up. Your heart's racing a little. You hear this thought in your mind, like get up and go get that. It makes you take this panicky, shaky action. Urges also normally put you in this like fight or flight state where you're like, you're literally not thinking anymore. So this is why you planning is so important because you're deciding ahead of time what you're going to do so that you're not in that scenario. Do you guys know what I'm saying? When I say that, what I mean is you can plan that when I have an urge, I'm going to do a compassion pause because you, when you're in an urge, you feel so panicky and insane that you literally, that's the reason why you stop for a second and you say, what do I actually need? You're like bringing a minute of consciousness to this body that's like out of control. Okay, I hope you guys can follow because I feel like I went a little bit left field. <laughs> but just know when I feel like I've got to get that food, it's like a quick hit energy. It's a very specific food. That's an urge. And what can I do in an, in an urgent situation when I'm having an urge, you can do the compassion pause because you're just going to put a, a second between you and what's happening. And you're going to let your prefrontal cortex kick in. Okay. The one that's making the decisions, not that habit brain. That's just running on autopilot, the habit loops. Okay. All right. What other questions do you guys have? Let's see when I have an urge. Um, I have a decaf coffee. Excellent idea. I love that. Usually after dinner in the evening, how can I stop that? Oh, I was going to say that sounds amazing. <laughs> okay. Um, and figure out what I really need. Okay. So question for you, Marianne, um, what's the problem with having the decaf though? Are you putting something in it? Like, is it that you're putting a bunch of stuff in it and it's like a sugary drink or what, what is not okay about having a decaf coffee? Cause that doesn't even 
Like I'm, I'm wondering what the problem is. I put cream in it and then I feel guilty. Okay. So, so question one, which I'm assuming is a no, but let me know if I'm wrong. I'm assuming that you're not hungry. Correct. So like, cause if you were hungry, I think that's a great strategy, but usually you're not right. Not at all. Okay. All right. So here's the question that I would play around with Marianne. I would play around with what is going to come up for me if I don't have this. So whenever you have something for you, it's the decaf. Other people think about what it is. Maybe it's like an apple with peanut butter. I don't care what it is. If I suggest to you, Hey, let's get rid of it. And you get anxious about it. You're like, Oh my gosh, no. Right. You're like, you just notice that. Why? Right. Yeah. Wine. Right. If I tell you, Hey, I'm going to take away that wine tonight. What comes up for you? That is going to be a treasure trove of what is actually happening for you. Okay. So sadness comes up. Yeah. So then the real thing. So once you say, okay, if I don't have this, what comes up for me? That is what we actually need to work on. So for example, if you say, and I don't know if you want to let us know kind of what do you think would come up? How do I figure that out? Okay. So let's say if here's what, how I would start. If every single night it's like, you know, 8 PM that you're having it, I would see what happens if I don't have it till 8 30. Like I want it at eight o'clock and I just see what comes up if I don't have this right now. And I wait 30 minutes, what's going to come up for you? What are you thinking during that time? So you might be thinking things like, I really want that is usually the first thing that people think. And they're like, no, there's nothing more there. I just want the cookie. But why, why do you want the decaf? You need to ask yourself why five times. And it might just be as simple as you're just used to having a decaf at night. And we just need to like me with the chips. There was nothing super deep there. I, I, what I noticed was I was actually super tired and I was sort of using the chips to like fuel myself so that I could have more energy at night. But I realized like, I just really need to go to bed. So I wonder what would happen if you just didn't have the decaf and you just tried that for a week and you just don't have it. You don't have, you don't have anything there. Or what happens if you, is it true? So what, um, let's see here. I think it's comfort. I'm looking for comfort. Yes. So here's the other question. What about just slowly easing yourself into, for example, you have the decaf and instead of having the same amount of cream, you decrease it a little bit. And then maybe you get to a version where it's just decaf or where it's just a tea. Is there a version where like, what's your stepping stone to getting there? So if you notice, you know, this, I'm really associating comfort with it. We know that it's your thoughts about it, right? Like you're having a really good story about this is what it's doing for me. But there's a version where you can slowly ease yourself into that change, right? We don't necessarily need to rip it all away. So could you just start to toy with the idea? What if I didn't get my comfort from this decaf? Where else would I get it from? Right? Could I read a nice book? Could I talk to someone? Um, I was just talking to someone the other day and she was talking about pleasure being an everyday experience. How, you know, do you have a favorite place where you sit? someone that you talk to, you know, all these kind of things. Like, can I get that comfort? Can I get those things in other ways? Just start to ask yourself, even if you're still sitting there having it, you just start to toy around with what would it look like if this was not how I got the comfort? Okay, so you're saying, okay, I like that. Um, I think it's even more manageable to decrease it and to think about how I can get comfort from life and not food and drink, right? And you know what I like there too that you just described? So sometimes when we slowly decrease stuff and then we do a little bit of the thought work with it, it's like we're ramping up the thought work. So we're thinking about how else we can manage life and we're slowly decreasing the food. The brain experiences no pain that way. It's so subtle. That's the 1% upgrade. A little bit, my, my thing I'm willing to try next week, decrease the cream a little bit in the decaf. And I'm willing to toy around with how else I could get these things out of actual life. Your brain's like, yeah, I'm on board. Versus if we maybe do the version where we're like, just rip it away. You're, you're, you're like, no, go have two now. <laughs> so basically replace it with something else. Yeah. What you're replacing it with is your true desire, 
because it's not that you're getting comfort from cream and decaf, right? You're having thoughts like this cup is so warm in my hand. This tastes so good. We're relaxing right now. We're on the couch. You probably also have lots of cues. Like when I have that, I'm sitting on the couch, maybe the TV's on, you have other things going on and you've kind of like paired it all together. And so we're just kind of slowly on um, like breaking all of that up. Thank you so much. I'm used to crazy diets that don't do this. Yeah. And it doesn't work, right? Like that version doesn't work. So I'm sorry that I kept you guys over a few minutes tonight, but I'm, I'm so glad that, um, uh, Alicia, I'm, I, I don't know if I'm saying your name, right. Um, I'll make sure that, um, that, uh, that Dr. High re reaches out to you with that question. Cause I'm not sure about that. So I want you guys to just think about leaving tonight. What is the little 1% upgrade that I'm willing to do? You make it manageable, you make it reasonable, and then you go and you do that because that's what sticks around. That's what gets you there. That's what maintains the weight loss and where you feel better, okay? And we're gonna, we're gonna leave it there. Okay, awesome. You guys are amazing. Everybody participated tonight. I'm honestly blown away. And I hope you guys have an awesome night tonight, weekend, all of it. And just practice a little bit of these pauses. Like you're, you're gonna get so much better at it. Awesome. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you. All right. We will talk next week. Bye.